Alrighty, from Macomb City Hall, it's um, Wednesday, the 27th of May, 2012. This is Mayor Mike Inman with our uh, most recent update on the COVID-19 situation here in Macomb and McDonough County. Information uh, as recent as yesterday from the McDonough County Health Department, uh, unfortunately reporting an additional three COVID-19 related deaths. Um, a female in her 60s, a male in his 80s, and a female in her 90s, bringing unfortunately the total of the number of deaths in McDonough County that are related to the COVID-19 virus to seven. So again, our uh, thoughts and concerns go out to the, those folks and their families uh, dealing with uh, their loss. A total of 84 cases currently, um, uh, positive cases in the county. Uh, the most recent one reported yesterday was a male in their 20s. And again, this, uh, these cases, all 84 of them run the gamut from you know, early teens to folks in their 90s. So uh, again, um, as it relates to victims, they're of a wide variety of age. Uh, just sharing that information with you. And then uh, our positivity count stands at about 9%. So we're still within um, a range that would allow us to continue on the process of opening or uh, going into phase three of the Restore Illinois plan. And that again is anticipated to occur this Friday. And uh, um, we'll go into more detail about that here in just a minute. And uh, would explain maybe a little bit about that positivity because folks would say, you know, you're continuing to have cases, but yet you're advancing. The whole uh, idea about um, that process is that it is highly dependent on the percentage of cases, overall cases that are tested are coming back positive. And the way the, the matrix is set up for advancing into the next phase is that we need to be at 20% or less of positive cases uh, through the testing process. We're well below that. Um, but keep in mind, uh, there's other factors we want to consider as we move forward. And again, more about that in a minute. Uh, so far, 40 of those 84 positive cases are considered recovered and that information uh, or that criteria is based on CDC guidance. However, um, the health department continues and they use the word increasingly important that as we do advance into um, the next phase of the Restore Illinois plan, where there is anticipation that will be more public interaction and, 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 and uh, the economy starting back up, which is a positive. They, they want to remind everyone it still is absolutely important to practice all those same uh, mitigation uh, strategies that we've been employing to keep the, the virus from uh, exploding here in McDonough County that we've done such a good job on. So continue to wear face coverings out in public when you cannot socially distance at six feet or more, uh, continue to wash your hands. And then quite honestly, if you're sick, stay at home. And if you're at risk, you should still be limiting your exposure outside even, or excuse me, to the general public. Those are things that are not likely to go away for a while. And as we, 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 we don't wanna be sending mixed signals, we're continuing to open and move forward in the, uh, in the economy. But you, all of these other uh, safeguards still need to remain in place. That's very important to make sure that as we do, uh, we're minimizing to the best uh, the extent we can of the spread of the virus. So uh, as it relates to the Restore Illinois plan, there's every anticipation that the, that, that will um, effectively go into uh, effect on Friday the 29th. So starting Friday the 29th, you'll be able to see uh, more business activity on the square, all areas of, of Macomb. Those small businesses will be opening with social distancing and other safeguards in place to allow you to come in and shop safely. Um, there will be also uh, the opportunity for restaurants and bars to start up uh, serving outside and we've, and to be honest with you, the city staff here has done a great job and I'm bragging on them, not myself here. In the last two weeks, we've anticipated the move to a uh, phase three that will take effect on uh, Friday. And we've made uh, significant proactive outreach to all of our businesses in the community, uh, helping them, giving them guidance on how to open and, and incorporate guide, uh, the guidance from the CDC and the Illinois Department of Public Health and getting their plans together in anticipation of the 29th. We've spent a great deal of time interacting with our bars and restaurants, not only on the square, but throughout the community, letting them know and supporting them. We've, I've issued uh, five orders that will abate some of the requirements that we normally would have in place to restrict activity outdoors, but now to allow that and full support of uh, 
them moving to the next phase and allowing them to maximize um, their efforts, but keeping them outdoors. We've presented them with guidance. We've given them plans. We've worked very closely. And as of this afternoon, about a handful of those businesses have received permits from our office. That's working collaboratively with the, with, uh, the McDonough County Health Department. Uh, our Office of Community Development and our downtown folks as well as uh, uh, the police department, the fire department and the city administration uh, very rapidly assessing those, giving the guidance and then assessing the permit process and many of those folks already have those permits in hand ready to go for Friday. It's our goal to get as many of those folks up and approved and permitted by Friday as that want to be up and ready to go. So we've been very proactive there and I want to thank uh, folks here at City Hall for rising to the occasion, and I think they, uh, I think they've done a good job. Keeping in mind that some folks, even after uh, we've uh, held some of these requirements in abeyance, still don't uh, uh, feel that they want to engage in outdoor activity, uh, selling, working, whatever. We respect that, and we understand that. The, but the vast majority of, uh, particularly bars and restaurants, will be uh, availing themselves of the opportunity to take some of their operation outdoors. And then once phase four uh, comes into play, they'll have access to having indoor uh, options for them, uh, likely on a limited basis. So we're moving forward with that. We're excited about that. We believe that uh, if everybody works closely together, we'll be able to find a good balance between getting the economy of the city back uh, into some some positive range and still be very mindful that the virus is still in the community and taking steps to mitigate its spread. So we believe working closely with the health department, we will be able to achieve that. We'll monitor it closely, but we, we feel, uh, feel positive about that. Uh, some other things we want to discuss with you and remind you of as, as it relates to um, some health care issues. The, uh, we talked about this several weeks ago. The building, some of the buildings that have been uh, closed for operation over the last uh, four, six, eight weeks, they will have they had the opportunity or not have they had the opportunity of their plumbing getting exercise. So water may be uh, sitting in pipes for you know a couple of months. We would like to them to avail themselves of flushing their their uh, uh, water systems, their internal water systems out, particularly daycares and churches. Uh, city staff, the health, uh, the water department in particular, has made outreach to uh, schools and some other. Uh, providers, uh, businesses in the community reminding them of this flushing that needs to likely to occur in buildings that have not been occupied or fully used for several weeks, if not months. And But we want to take the opportunity to reach out to folks in churches and daycare centers that they should be exercising the plumbing in, in their buildings that have not been occupied so that the water uh, is properly chlorinated and being consumed and is safe. So um, it's easily done and you can check with the uh, uh, the Macomb City uh, Water Department for guidance on that. Mr. Kent Cox is a, the manager in the Water Department. He does a great job for us and it's something that he would like to remind us we need to remind you of to do. Let's talk a little bit about the census for a minute. Uh, that is still very much in, uh, on our minds and it's something that we want to remind you if you've, if you've not had a chance to self-report on the census, please do so. For example, uh, we're running a little behind um, where we need, should be, especially when comparing to our peers. We're at 55.7%. Uh, self-response rate. The national average is 60.2 percent and the state average is 65.2 percent. So we're a little behind. We'd encourage you to please take the time to do that. Uh, we can tell online quadrants of the, uh, not specific addresses, please remember that, it's not what we're talking about, but quadrants of the city that are not um, uh, yet uh, fully on board with participation. So particularly in the southwest part of town and the northeast part of town, those folks, uh, we'd remind you if you could take a little extra time. And if you've already done it, that's great. We don't have any way of knowing that for sure. But the, there is some data that's showing that those areas currently are not uh, reporting at the rate we would hope they would be. So please take a few minutes. It's uh, so critical to us uh, getting funding that we need, particularly as we continue to deal with the uh, uh, the lack of revenue from sales tax and things like that it relates to the uh, pandemic, we want to make sure that we get our fair share of those shared dollars that come per capita or by based on our population. So again, please do that. Do that. We'd also like to remind you that McDonough District Hospital still has the uh, program in place for testing 
And again, the nurse triage hotline, they'd like you to coordinate your efforts through there. It doesn't require a doctor's um, order. You just need to go there and, and submit yourself to the testing. Uh, that number's on your screen now. Again, their hours are from 7A to 7P. And then they have some, uh, they'll get you in the queue to get lined up for the testing. And at the end of the day, um, they'll give you the information on when the tent is actually open. But the, the hotline is, again, the numbers on your screen is 7A to 7P, seven days a week. We'd also, again, remind you at this time that if for whatever reason you're putting off interacting with your primary care physician, whether it's just a routine checkup or follow up on some chronic illnesses that you uh, need, uh, blood work, whatever, please don't hesitate to interact with them. As a matter of fact, on a personal note, I'll be leaving right after this uh, videotaping to go see my primary care physician on a follow-up uh, uh, that I need to make with, with them. So I encourage you to do that. And uh, MDH, your primary health care provider locally here, they've taken extraordinary steps to make sure that you're going to be safe when you come into the environment and interact with them. So please do that. We want to take just a minute and thank a small group of volunteers from the Flags of Love Committee that did deploy the uh, I think a, a nice tribute to our uh, Memorial Day celebration last weekend. The flags were actually up until uh, from uh, Saturday until uh, Tuesday midday, so we got to enjoy them on, on a abbreviated or smaller scale than, uh, than we're used to, but we do appreciate their efforts in doing that fully under uh, compliance of the stay-at-home order. And that's one reason that we were, were reluctant to have volunteers up there. We knew there would be a, an opportunity for folks to want to give back, and we appreciate that. There will be a time uh, sometime later this summer when we'll be needing your help for the grand display that we're all used to. But those, those handful, less than 10 that showed up to do that for uh, the community, we appreciate that. Again, as usual, if you have any questions, uh, as a matter of fact, City Hall will be opening up uh, on Monday, June 1st, normal business hours. There'll be some additional restrictions. They'll be widely published. We'll get that information out in a news release between now and the weekend. But if there's anything you need between now and the time that you can come and go into City Hall a little more freely, please reach out to us. Then the numbers will be at the end of the video. My office, the Office of Community Development, Downtown Development, the City Clerk, the City uh, Administrator, the City uh, Attorney, all there. We're all here. We're all working. We want you to know that if you've got questions, please ask. We want to be in a position to openly share information with you. Until the next time, thanks.